second installment of some computer craft tutorials. Um, this time I'm going to go through this little thing you see in the background here. So let's switch over to this, which is a button touch screen interface. So at any time I can click the button, turn the lights on, turn the spawner on, turn a grinder on. I just used um, the standard. Again, you could use Draconic Evolution. Um, it's also redstone controlled or any other devices. So this could be set up for farms. This could be set up for anything that you have that has redstone control for on and off. Um, last time we covered doing the power monitor. And with that, I went through kind of the basic setup for computer craft to determine uh, what it can pick up with the different peripherals and how to kind of set up the basic information. So I'll go ahead and put a link to that. You can click that and go watch that one if you need some background information. If not, we're going to go ahead and move on to the second one, which is touch interfaces. So this one right here is actually a multi-screen where you could have different things. So I could click on spawner and it would bring up different spawner controls. Or based on my power situation, I could say, okay, everything's going to this Tesseract. I want to turn the Tesseract off. Now it's not outputting any power. So now none of my other pieces of my base will get power. So again, all using the same premise of how I'm going to set up this one for the touch controls. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and start a new program here. And again, all of that basic information you can get from the previous tutorial on Lua for the power monitor. All right, so we're going to just go ahead and name this. So edit, we'll start a new one here, we'll call it control. All right, so we got our new program set up. Well, there is actually one other thing that we need, which is I use an API for touch scenarios. Uh, so what that does is it, I could write all of the program in here that covers, okay, what to do for a touch screen, how to set up each button based on their XY coordinates, but I'm using an external API that's already been written, um, and that API is available for anybody to download and then load that at the start of your program. So to do that, we're first going to save this one, which doesn't have anything in it, and we're going to call the API program. So for that, you're going to need to do um, pastebin dot or pastebin get and then the API code which is lowercase p capital F H E I A 96 and then in my case I always call it touch so this will create a program on here called touched now if I um, look at what's on there you can see touch is already a program that's created so I don't need to load it again so now I'm going to go back into control and the, the API's name is Touchpoint API. Um, why I use that one is it doesn't, you don't ever have to modify the code itself. You don't have to modify where the monitor sits. You can pass all of those to it as variables um, at the initial call of that API. All right, so we're going to go back in now and do edit for control. And now let's go ahead and call the touchpoint API. So os.load API. And in my case, I called it touch. And now we're ready. So now it's going to load that at the start of the program. So then I can then use that utility. Um, so some other things that we need to do is we do go ahead and wrap our monitor. So monitor equals peripheral. And again, I covered all of this if you need any of it in the previous tutorial. And monitor's on top in this case. And now we need to get into using the touchscreen API. So a couple of things that you need to do is you need to first tell it where the monitor is located. So I'm going to call a local. And the variable will be t1. And it will equal touch is the name of our API, so touch.new, and it's also set to top. So I'm creating a new instance for touchpoint to use a monitor that's above the computer. 
The next part is we are going to set a local. Now, I don't have to do this, but I'll explain. Um, I'm setting it to this local for this new instance, but at any point I could actually create more than one page. So I could do a local T2 and have it be, again, touch new top. And if I clicked on a button, I could then have it load a separate page um, of buttons. So therefore, if you wanted more control or to have more buttons on the screen, but there's no screen space left, you could maybe have a next button and load all of the new buttons with T2. All right, so we've got our two main variables set for here. Now we're going to get into our functions. So we're going to cover first the touch screen, and then I'm going to come back in and cover the redstone controls. So at last time I covered the power monitor, we didn't touch redstone at all. But in this case, I'm going to show you my setup first. So behind here, I have my computer. Now, using the Ender I.O., it doesn't always connect to a computer. Now, I could have used bundled cable, but that's getting more advanced, and I'll cover that in another tutorial. I could have used basic redstone. Um, I could have used any other different pipe. In this case, I just wanted it all bundled into one so I could show it easier and go through it. So I have the Project Red, red alloy wire running to an insulated redstone conduit. I got one in the back, one on the left, one on the right. Now these are all set up color coded, so green, brown, and blue. And those each go to different things. So here is my spawner. You can see my spawner is blue. Up here I have the grinder, and the grinder is brown. And then the last one is my light. And I can't get through the hole. There we go. And it is set to green. So I do have power being ran, so this green cable over here is running power. I also have my item output, this wire right here, item conduit, pulling from my grinder and throwing it into a chest next to the monitor. Uh, the last one is I do have it also set up with a creative tank for um, the uh, yeah mob essence that's needed for the spawner. So it's pulling it from here sending it into the tank, and then from the tank it's going into the spawner. Now, of course, I used a creative tank, so I'm never going to run out, but in most cases you'd probably have a railcraft tank or something like that that you're holding a lot of uh, essence in and can then use it for your spawner. So going through this, I've covered, okay, we've got the redstone connected to each side. Now we need to go through, set up our touch screen, and then we'll set up the redstone controls. So first for the touch screen, I'm going to first do my main function, which is to write the buttons. So this only gets called once. Um, this will be called to set the initial buttons. So first we need to uh, set up our buttons themselves. So T1 was the variable I set for page one. In this case, I only have one page. I'm gonna add a button called grind. I am then going to set its program that it's going to run to nil, and then I'm going to set its xy location. So min x will be 2, min y will be 2, max x will be 8, which is, again, we're trying to look for the same button size here. So 2, 2 and 2 is this corner here, and then 8 and 4 is this corner there. I think it's 8 and 4. 8 and 4. And then we're going to set our colors. So colors.red would be our deactive color. And then colors.lime is our active color. Now we have three buttons, so I'm going to go through those real quick. And we'll do the same thing, but we need this one for spawn. No function being called. Uh, it's not the same. It would need to be over. So 12, 2, 18, 4. Colors.red. Colors.lime. Forgot my bracket. There we go. 
and the third button is the lights. Light, nil. This one's farther over. It's 22, 2, 28, 4. All right. Colors dot red. Colors dot line. So we've got all our three buttons drawn out now, so they'll be in the same locations. Um, and again, for this, we'll just go ahead and we'll make active blue instead of lime, just to change it up. Blue. Actually, there's a light blue. Let's do light blue. Light blue. I think that's how it's written. Alright, so we got our function for right buttons. We want to go ahead and set t in this function to t1. And then we're going to draw our screen. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. So function is now written for creating the screen. The next thing we need to do at this point is our while statement. And again, I covered the while statement in the previous, um, but you need for anything that's repeating, you need something similar to loop through and keep running the event. So on the while statement, there's one thing from the touch you want to do is you want to get the pull event for when somebody touches the screen. So local event, that's the first variable. I'm going to get the event. And then P1 in my case will be the variable I'm the button name that it's being returned when you click it. And then T for touch point, handle events, OS dot pull event, bracket, bracket, close it. All right, so now we've got our, when I touch it, it's going to hit this. It's going to send back an event. The event could be a redstone signal. The, red the event could be um, the block was broken. There could be a lot of different things. Well, in this case, we're looking for the touch event specifically. So if event is equal to button click, which is what we're looking for, then we want to do something. We want to t toggle button that's named P1. P1 being the name that's being returned. And we're going to go ahead and also print P1 to show what is being clicked. And we're going to end. So at this point, we should be able to save, exit, what I name it, control. And I'm missing an end statement at 1621. Edit control. So start and end, it's not this one, it's this one here. So we have our if statement and we have our while statement. I ended the if statement, but I did not end the while statement. So I'm going to go back and do a little bit of indenting. It's a little easier to read. There we go. Control. And we have our buttons. Now, the buttons are not even picking up that I'm touching it because I never actually wrote anything to tell it to write the buttons to the screen. So we call our function write button here, or we create the function, but we never call it. Before we get into our while loop, we want to go ahead and do the initial creation of our buttons. So we're going to call the function above while true for write buttons. And now if I was to run controls, T2 doesn't even exist. T3 doesn't even exist. Run it. Now we have our buttons. We have our touch set to uh, toggle. If I go back and we set it to instead of toggle, you can actually set it to flash. We can actually click it. You can see it just flashes. So you have both functions you can use. I'm going to set it back to button toggle run. So now we have our buttons. I spelled it wrong. It is toggle button. 
toggle button, run, got our lights. So now we're good. Now these aren't doing anything. It's sending back what I'm pushing on the buttons, but there's nothing being called to tell it what to do. So now we need to get into our next function. So now we're going to get into redstone. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, and I'm going to show you guys a little something over here. So we're going to end this here, and I'm going to go into Lua. So redstone has a lot of, uh, like six different commands it can do. So you can actually write out redstone and see all the different programs, or you can just use rs. rs dot, and then I can do get input to find out what the signal strength is on the left. Now, right now, it's or not signal strength, but is it getting a signal? Right now, that redstone is off. I can also do rs to get output on the left to true. So now, not get, set output on the left, should have understood when I read that, it didn't sound right, to true. So now that redstone on the left, which is currently off, as you can see, power zero. If I run, it's now on power 15. With the way that redstone works, I'm using uh, standard input-output binary for yes, no being on and off. Well, you can get down to an analog level. So I can do an rs dot, and if I get back to the uh, previous one I wrote, let's see, get input left, if we run this, you can see it's just returning yes, there is a signal coming. But if I do a get analog input for the left, I can actually see that I'm receiving 15 on the scale of redstone, which is 0 to 15. I can also do the same if I needed to for set analog output on left, and I can set it to, say, if it wants to be 10. So now if I look at the signal, you can see on the top of the screen, power 10. And again, going back to get it, and it's saying, yes, there's 10 redstone signal on the left-hand side. So this is all different things that I'm going to use over here to be able to set the redstone and see if it's actually on or not. So one of the things that we have right now is what is currently on and what is not. So before you even start, we need to know, okay, right now this one's on, this one's on, and this one's off. Well, when I start up my computer, so say if the server if server restarts or if you know something's automatically in an on state when the computer boots up, I reboot the computer. Well, how does it know which buttons need to be which colors? We need to first check the left, right, and the back to say what is the current um, input for each redstone signal. All right, so edit control. And we're going to go ahead and do a button. We'll put it down underneath this one for check redstone. Uh, check redstone. I'll just do red RS. All right, so now what do we want to do? If rs.get, and this is what we just went through, the input on the back is equal, whoops, equal to false, then toggle button grinder end. Alright, so now we've checked it. If it's false, I want to make sure that the, go ahead and toggle the initial button for the grinder to be false, or on in this case, because a grinder in its natural state is always running. So in the initial state of when the server starts up, if the grinder's running, I want the button to show that it's on. So I'm toggling it to the on state. 
same thing now for dot get input for let's see the left the left one was blue blue is the spawner and this one again same thing spawner is on when the server starts up when the compute when the when you first put one down if it has power it's going to be on toggle button spawn end the last one is the lights now the light i'm using not an inverted light so it's the opposite case when the server starts up the light's going to be off so in this case i want to say let's see this is the right equal to true then i want to toggle it so if the computer starts up the lights already on go ahead and turn it on and end we're done so Anytime you're doing a comparison statement in Lua, you do need to make sure you have two equal signs. If you only have one, it's not going to know what to do. It's going to try to set this variable to true. Well, that's not a variable, so it's going to fail. You'll get an error message. All right, so we've got our check function. Let's go ahead and end that right here. Now we're going to run this at the beginning of the program. So in this case, we'll do a check RS, again, before the while statement save it and we're going to execute again it does not like this it was 10 again exit control did i just roll back control edit control did i forget to uh save it i guess so one one let's save that control so now you can see, last time we started it up, it was, oh, it also rolled back the light blue. Um, it was coming up red every time. Well, now it knows that the light's already on and the grinder is already on. So because those are both already on, and let's double check. You can see it's using power. It's idle is still running. And the light, of course, is on. So it knew to default both of those to on. And the spawner itself is off, so idle is not moving. The redstone signal that's connected to it is dark, um, so it's going to set it to the off mode. So now that we know how to check what the redstone is, now we can actually use the buttons to toggle the redstone signal being output. So edit control. And the last function that we're going to use is going to be the check the click. Um, actually, we're going to go ahead and use two. We're going to write one function for flip um, toggle RF RS on the redstone output. And we're going to write a function for check click. A check click will take in P1, which is the button being clicked and let's go ahead and end. So for check clicked, what we're going to do is it's going to be called from here. So down here we're going to run the function check click send in the p1 variable. So if it's spawner that I'm clicking or light that I'm clicking, it'll say light. Light goes into here. Now what am I going to do with that? So first off, I'm going to check to see what p1 equals. So p1, if p1 is equal to um, light, then we want to do something. If p1 is equal to spawn, if p1 is equal to last up grinder. Now what do we want to do? In this case, we're going to run the toggle RS function. So in here, toggle RS, and we're going to send the location of each of these. So again, back, left, right that I need, 
I need to send that into here because we're going to use that in this toggle RS function. So the light is on the left hand side. Uh, no, right is on light is on right in my case. And again, it's best if you write them down so you know what you're looking at. The next one is spawner. Spawner was on the left. It's the blue light. And now the grinder's on the back. Toggle RS, back. All right. Why am I writing then on there? I already have an if statement. There we go. Those look great. If light, toggle right. OK. If spawn, toggle left. If grind, toggle back. Now, we're now sending in left, right, or back into this toggle function. Well, the toggle function, all it needs to do is set RS output. Now, what do we set RS output to? True or false? We need to know what is RS output right now. Well, we really don't have to grab that value. I could go in and say, OK, get RS output for get the input for RS out. It'll tell me, is it on or off? Well, if it's on, then turn it off. If it's off, then turn it on. That's a fairly large if statement that I would have to run, where in most cases I can just say, I want to set the output to the opposite of what it is now. So RS dot set output for RS out, which is left, right, or back, to not RS dot get output for RS out. All right, so now we're checking for the opposite of it. Set it not to what it is, and then we will be able to toggle it back and forth. So all of this being said and done, let's save it, and let's see if it breaks. Control, OK, light. And there we go. We have control for our light. It's now turning on, turning off. Um, I do have items that go in here. So if I go ahead and turn the spawner on, the grinder's on, everything's on. If we go in here and look, it is not toggling. So spawner, check it one more time. Ah, spawner is with an A. So now we have that. Save. Control, spawner on, checking, it is actually on, <coughs> and the grinder is off. So we should start getting people. Let's make it dark in there. Oh yeah, nice and loud. Turn the grinder on. Of course, the first one starts with a computer on his head. That works out perfectly, doesn't it? Sound of music, turn all that off. All right, so now the grinder should be kicking in. Now I am in creative mode, so I can just go in here, but all those people died. All of the items have now been sucked up, and we're now collecting mob grinds from a spawner room that's now controlled with a computer. Once you do get all of this set up, you can actually set the program to auto start, um, and then cover it up, and you're good to go. You now have a button-controlled spawner room. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, leave me questions in the comments. And let me know if there's anything else you guys want to see programmed. Um, I will go through a larger spawner room. Um, I have built one where it has a large monitor. And you can actually control all of the safari nets that get put in. So I can say, oh, I want to spawn cats. And choose cat. And it'll start spawning cats and be able to kill those. So until next time, you guys uh, let me know what you want. And I'll talk to you later.